So the use fake timers, it instructs Jazz to use the fake version of the standard timer functions. You can see now that all those functions are now a mock function of the jest. You can also tell jest to use the real timers. So even if I create a callback, let me remove from this one. So even if I create a before each to use the fake timers, at this point, if I tell to use the real timer, just we'll start using real timers. The run all ticks, it runs all the process that have added by the next tick So if we run this process, it will call the running for the zero time. Actually, it's, it should be the one. It will call the, the console logger just one time because it is not because this tick is not running yet. So I'll run, I'll call tell Jazz to run all the ticks and see what happens. And it runs two times. Actually, let me increase this value to three. And even if at the first call it, it calls the next tick again, Jess will try to run all the ticks until it finishes. So if I remove this, I'll have a problem. It will run indefinitely. The run timers, it exhausts both the tasks like the set timeout, set interval, set intermediate, and also the next tick.
Okay, if I run this test like this without calling the run all timers, nothing will happen because even the first call to the tick and timer runner, it will be inside the timeout and it won't run. So if I remove this, you can see that it calls the starting and also runs all the next ticks. The run all immediate runs all the tasks queued by the set immediate. Okay, and you can see the console log here for the run all immediates, it ran three times because I'm breaking at this point. The advanced timers by time, it advances the time for just to that millisecond. I'll run only this test. Okay, because I'm only advancing 10 milliseconds, oops, milliseconds. Because I'm advancing only 10 milliseconds, it will only console log this first line. But if I change this for 30, it will run both timeouts. I can also use the syntax run timers by time. Sorry, run timers to time. And it works. The run only pending timers runs only the tasks that are current pending. So if I have this example and run the only pending timers, it will run only this first one. If I run it again, you run the it will run the child because this at this point only the first one is pending. Okay, so it calls on the first one. If I call it two times, it will call both. The clear all timers, it removes all pending timers from the timer system, and it means that if a timer haven't been run, it won't be run anymore.
Okay, so even if I call two times like I did here, it will only run the first one because I'm clearing the timers at this point. So this will be forgotten, it, it won't run ever again. The get timer count returns the number of fake timers still left to run. Okay, at this point it seems that I have two timers to run, but actually I have only this one pending to run. So that's what the get timer count will return for me. And when I run this first timer, it will it will add this one to the queue and the timer count will still be one, but after I run the both of them, the timer count will be zero. So if I have two distinct timers, it will pass because in this case I do have two. I have this one and this one pending and after I run it I, I have only one that's related to this one and then it has only zero after I run all the timers.